2019 so far has seen plenty of ups and downs for all four engine manufacturers. Those manufacturers of course being Ferrari, Mercedes, Renault and Honda. But who so far in 2019 is ahead when it comes to sheer power and performance, but also reliability. Well in today's video I'm going to look at all the manufacturers and look at how their 2019 has gone so far in terms of power, performance and reliability. And also look at how they need to improve going forward. So if you want to find out how the engine manufacturers so far in 2019 have done, make sure to check out this video. So first let's start off with Ferrari. Now of course in 2018 they did have the most powerful power unit on the grid for the first time in the V6 hybrid era. And of course, if they were going to keep up some good performance, especially for their works team, they had to keep that up going into 2019. Now, pre-season testing for the Ferrari power unit was a bit on and off. There were reliability issues, especially for the works team Ferrari but mostly it was just about okay. But coming into the first Grand Prix, Ferrari especially, they couldn't really show how good their new 2019 power unit was because the team on the bodywork got it wrong when it came to cooling, meaning that they couldn't turn up the power unit and really let it go and show its true potential. So we had to wait until Bahrain to see just how powerful it really was. And well, it really, really was very, very good. As Ferrari were easily the quickest in a straight line and they were now definitely, just like they were in 2018, the engine manufacturer to beat in terms of sheer power. But they were still struggling as they were at times in testing when it came to reliability as Charles Leclerc whilst leading the Bahrain Grand Prix had a power unit issue with about 10 laps to go. So the power was there, but the reliability at the moment was not. Then a couple races later at the 2019 Spanish Grand Prix, because Ferrari's car was not quite doing that well, Ferrari panicked and rushed forward their new Spec 2 power unit. Even though, of course, the Spanish Grand Prix track doesn't require a good power unit. But even so, the new Spec 2 power unit was definitely an upgrade compared to the Spec 1. Not massively, but there was a difference. And even after Canada, when Mercedes brought their new Spec 2 power unit, Ferrari were still the kings when it came to sheer power. And except for a couple small reliability issues from Canada up until now, Ferrari still have the most powerful engine on the grid. Now, when it comes to reliability issues for their customers, there hasn't been that many. Kimi Raikkonen did have an ICE issue in practice at Silverstone, and also Antonio Giovinazzi did have an issue, I believe, in Shanghai. But for the customers, it's been mostly fine, and they have. When their car aerodynamically, the Alpha and Haas, has been good, they have, of course, benefited from the very powerful Ferrari power unit. But all in all, so far, the Ferrari power unit has been pretty good. The only two weaknesses they've got to work on and solve is one, reliability, because for the works team, reliability has been not a massive issue, but a small issue that they still have to get on top of. But also, the Ferrari power unit is very thirsty when it comes to fuel. They've got to try if they can and solve that issue. Because that's something that did affect their performance on race day for the Ferrari works team in Canada. So they do need to work on that. But in terms of sheer power, everything looks great. By the way, if you don't believe me when it comes to this Ferrari engine, just look at these speed traps from Bahrain. Four of the top five in the first intermediate speed trap are Ferrari powered cars. Just shows you again how great they are now in this area. But now let's go on to Mercedes. Now in 2018, Mercedes still had a very powerful power unit, but it wasn't as powerful as the Ferrari. So even though they did win both the drivers and constructors in 2018, when it came to the power unit, there was still some work to do. 
But after testing in the first couple races, it became clear that in terms of the power of their engine compared to Ferrari's engine, there was no difference compared to 2018. Ferrari still had a lot over Mercedes. The only thing Mercedes had that was a good thing over Ferrari was, so far, reliability. Which, of course, was a key factor in them getting a 1-2 finish in Bahrain, even though they didn't deserve it. And if you look at the first six races of the Spec 1 power unit, it was extremely reliable and was, quite frankly, bulletproof in every area. But after Canada, where they brought the new Spec 2 power unit, some reliability issues have started to come out. For example, Lewis Hamilton's car in Canada did have some issues, and also there were slight issues for Bottas in France. But these issues have never been big enough for them to occur when it mattered most in a qualifying session or a Grand Prix. So in terms of reliability, they have been the best out of all the manufacturers. But they are still lacking in power compared to Ferrari. Now for their customers, again in the first six races, Racing Point and Williams didn't have any real reliability issues. But after the Spec 2 power unit came out, there were a couple issues for Racing Point and Williams. Stroll had a failure in Canada, I believe in practice three. And Russell had an issue in practice in France. So reliability at the moment is not necessarily getting better, but it is still, again, when it matters in the qualifying and the races, it's still good enough. So going forward for Mercedes, they look to me to be absolutely fine when it comes to reliability and still mostly for power. But of course, they are still lacking compared to Ferrari. And if they are going to continue to win the amount of races that they are, they've got to start closing that gap to Ferrari in terms of power because it's a bit embarrassing for this team and this company that was so great in terms of their power unit ever since 2014. And I definitely do sense a loss of pride in not having the most powerful engine on the grid anymore. Also, these are some speed traps from Canada. And again, it does show you who does have the most powerful power unit on the grid right now. And again, it is the Ferrari as three of the top five are Ferrari powered cars. But the spec to Mercedes power unit is definitely closer to the Ferrari, but still not close enough to make a massive difference when it matters at certain power tracks. But now let's get into the final two manufacturers. First off, Renault. Now, after 2018, Renault knew with big new signing Daniel Ricciardo coming to their works team that they had to try and improve the power and reliability desperately. And in 2019, the power has slightly improved, but reliability really has not. Because even the works team have had plenty of issues that have cost them plenty of points. For example, Bahrain with their double retirement with Nico Hülkenberg and Daniel Ricciardo both in the points. Also, Hülkenberg's issue in Shanghai cost him and the team a points finish. So as soon as the season started, reliability was already an issue for Renault, meaning that Later on in 2019, they are going to incur some penalties. But I will say, after Canada and France, where Renault did bring an upgraded power unit, they definitely did improve in terms of power, especially compared to their closest rival, Honda. And it does look as though, at the moment, it's still close, but it does look as though that Renault do have slightly more power than the Honda. But due to Renault's poor reliability, again, it's not making for a totally sound power unit. And compared to 2018, Renault's 2019 power unit is not a massive upgrade, to be honest. And also, McLaren have had their issues when it comes to reliability with the Renault. For example, Carlos Sainz's failure in Melbourne and also Lando Norris's reliability issue in France, which cost him a P7 finish. So even their customer team McLaren have had issues that have cost them definitely some vital points. 
And going forward for Renault, that's the only thing they've got to try and solve for the rest of 2019 is reliability. Because in terms of power compared to their rivals, it's not looking too bad. But again, when it comes to reliability, if they continue with the bad reliability they do have, then it's going to cost the works team and McLaren vital points. So Renault, for the millionth time since 2014, have got to step up in that area. But realistically, do we expect them to? Of course not. But now let's finally go on to Honda. Now 2018 was a year of development for Honda. And in the Toro Rosso, as the year went on, it did look very good, especially at the very end of 2018. But expectations, of course, were high for 2019 as Honda were going to have their power units in the Red Bull car. And after testing and the first few races, the Honda power unit in terms of power and reliability was very, very good. And in the first four races, I would say the Honda was probably ahead of the Renault in terms of power and definitely way ahead in terms of reliability. Also, another great thing about Honda so far this season is that they've not hesitated to bring new parts to their power unit to try and increase the power every so often. For example, with upgrades at Baku, France and even Austria. And it's great to see that Honda are willing to keep improving as quickly as possible. But definitely, if you look at after the Canadian Grand Prix, in terms of power, they have definitely took a step back because... I thought in terms of power, before we got to Canada, they were definitely ahead of Renault and not that far off Mercedes, but definitely now they are further behind Mercedes in terms of power and I think are slightly behind Renault. And that's simply because the upgrades at France, for example, that they brought to Red Bull and Toro Rosso haven't quite worked out as well as they wanted it to. And by the way, yes, I know Red Bull improved after Austria, but that was not because of Honda. That was because Red Bull brought a new front wing. That's why Red Bull are a lot better now than they were before. But still, mostly when it comes to reliability, especially for Red Bull, it's been very good. And that's a very, very surprising thing to say. And also reliability for Toro Rosso has been pretty good. Reliability issues are becoming more common for Toro Rosso of Honda as the season goes on, but they're very small in comparison to, say, 2018 or years before with Honda. Now, the only thing going forward Honda need to improve on is power output because, again, if you look at the upgrade they brought to the French Grand Prix, it didn't really improve the power output of the Honda so they've got to try if they can and get back ahead of Renault when it comes to power. Because if they can, then they should be way better than them in terms of getting results. Because also, in terms of reliability, the Honda has been comfortably better. So if Honda can improve by, say, 20 or 25 horsepower, they can definitely have a very good end of 2019. Especially with Red Bull, who, with a better aerodynamic car are now looking very, very good. So hopefully Honda can continue the progress they have been making for the last year and a half. Because I don't think you can deny it would be great for Formula 1 if they continued the progress and got closer to Ferrari and Mercedes. And when it comes to these respective engine manufacturers, things are not looking massively different to 2018. Ferrari are about the same distance ahead of Mercedes in terms of power compared to 2018. And Renault at the moment, I think, are ahead of Honda just about. Which, of course, is different to the end of 2018. But as we've seen with Honda, that can change very, very quickly. So when it comes to these respective engine manufacturers, make sure to look out because they're all going to be still improving when it comes to power and reliability. And definitely look out for new Spec 3 power units for all these manufacturers coming out at either Spa or Monza. And it really will be interesting to see who makes further progress with their power unit. But guys, that has been it for this video. Make sure to comment down below whether you agree with what I've said in terms of the power and reliability of the Ferrari, Mercedes, Renault and Honda. And also comment down below what you thought of this video. And again, comment down below what you thought of what I had to say in this video.
But yeah, guys, that is it for this video. But also, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. And also, don't forget to smash the like button for more content like this. And until my next video, guys, very, very soon, it has been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.